Hi everyone. Let's see. Hi everyone. It's so good to see all of you joining us today in this week's virtual trunk show between in partnership between John Harvey and J.R. Dunn. I hope you are all doing safe, staying sane too, which is equally as important, you know, in this in this day and age. It's such an honor for me to be able to share with all of you a sneak peek into the creative journey that goes behind designing for John Hardy's exclusive one-of-a-kind collection and I, I really hope you are all excited to experience some pretty spectacular and pretty exquisite jewelry pieces from the comfort of your home you know whether it's in your little studio or in bed or in the sofa whatever works oh I'm so happy to see some familiar faces or names come through it's so good to see be connected to all of you first of all you know as maybe we wait for more people to join big 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 thank you and a big shout out to the JR Dunn team and my fellow John Hardy team members oh my god I could not have done this without you I mean you know who you are thank you for your partnership your your support and for your patience in helping this really unsavvy social media, not savvy social media person figure out how to navigate Instagram Live. You know, you guys are the best. You know who you are. Let's start with a little bit of a backstory into John Hardy, the brand. And for those of you who are not familiar with how we began, John Hardy, the person, you know, once upon a time, he he was he is actually he is an artist a passionate visionary and just an adventurous creative seeking inspiration and visited bali back in the 70s and was just enchanted not just by the island's beauty but also the community of local artisans who have dedicated their livelihood to handcrafted techniques and it's this ethos that the brand today, John Hardy, continues to uphold, where it's particularly amplified in some of these one-of-a-kind jewelry pieces. Master artisans honor that craft of making jewelry by hand from start to finish. And these pieces really, truly are one-of-a-kind and just brilliantly alive, you know, and Chinta, which is the name of the one-of-a-kind jewelry collection, literally translates to love in the, in the Indonesian language. And essentially, that's what it is. It's inspired by, by love. I mean, when John first started making jewelry for his wife, Cynthia, it, what began as precious gifts of love using just rare and unusual gemstones that they had collected throughout their years of traveling together it just evolves into this high jewelry collection that we know of today and we talk about you know chinta being one of a kind and it really does start with the gem because the gems are truly one of a kind. No gemstone is the same shape, size, or color. And I'm actually going to start with these chinta earrings because to me this really exemplifies really the beauty of the natural beauty of the gemstones that we select throughout our design and creative process. I mean, take a look at these. These are a match pair of Australian opal earrings. And, you know, we, I talked about how John and Cynthia would travel the world together collecting rare and unusual gemstones. And this is a tradition we continue to uphold today. I mean, 
some of the, the crazy adventures we go on around the world seeking just rare and, and inspirational material. I mean, these opals, so I said that they were from Australia, but they were cut in Italy, found in Tucson, Arizona last year, set by our artisans in Southeast Asia, and now we're sitting in the palm of my hand here in New York City. And I, it, it just amazes me because, you know, opal is one of the most powerful healing stones. And legend has it, the opal is derived from the rainbow. And you can see, particularly with the flashes of light that run through it, some people say it's, it's like trapped lightning in there. And, part, and when the sun does hit it, and as you're wearing it, and as you're moving, you see that flash of orange, and oh, I just, I wish you could see it in person, and I wish I could show it to you in person, because even through the screen, and even me looking at it on, on uh, via Instagram Live right now, it just, it does not do it justice. You know, I really want to be able to capture that flash of the opal the orange flash of the opal here for you to see because it's just, it's absolutely stunning. And we talk about the community of artisans and how we uphold that spirit of the collaboration of handcrafted techniques. And it's not just within our community. We, equally important to us is partnering with people who truly dedicate their lives in their craft. And this also means partnering with people within the gemstone industry who truly understand material and how to bring out the best in the material um, as they're shaping and cutting the stones. I mean, these particular opals, um, when, we, when we found them, they were telling us that how they were able to get this mirrored pattern on either side was literally taking the rough slicing it down the middle and butterflying it open and that was also why they were able to achieve how thin the slice is which means for the big look that it is it's very wearable and it does not pull on your ear and you know i think to me mother nature never ceases to amaze me and this just completely continues completely continues to reinforce that. We talk about John Hardy being steeped in the body. And you know, I think because of that rich history and because of that rich culture, there's a lot of myths, symbols, power, and meaning that we're able to be inspired from and amplify and create within our collections. And one of the renowned collections within the John Hardy brand for Chinta is the Machan. Now, I'm actually wearing it right now. And the Machan is tiger in Balinese. And you can see, I mean, look at how gorgeous that is. Now, the tiger symbolizes courage, strength, and passion. And to me, this really exemplifies not just our brand, but our commitment as well to sustainability and to the community and giving back to the community. I mean, I was, I was reading on the, the other day in National Geographic, the Bali tiger, a uh, scientific name, Panthera tigris sondaica, I believe, what actually went ex extinct in the 1950s. And that just further reinforces and reminds us as a brand and as a community that the tremendous need to respect the precious earth that we continue to inhabit and those who inhabit it with us. And this particular necklace, I mean, is, is spectacular because not only does it have this gorgeous symbol of strength and perseverance from the tiger, but it's also, 
the the combination and composition of stones that we use within the mosaic of stones around the tiger it what we wanted to recreate was almost like he, the tiger was coming out from the exotic jungle and landscape of bali because it's just so vibrant and full of color i mean i can show you quickly this is the sketch that we were working on as we were bringing this to life and so you can see excuse the backwards handwriting but you can see the stones that we thoughtfully composed together to recreate that look and to really have it be integrated and have the R signature Machan immerse within within his environment. You know, and I think if you took a look at that, you can see how closely it resembled the final sketch and how closely our our master artisans were able to recreate what was originally just a beautiful piece of a uh, beautiful drawing on a piece of paper into a three-dimensional wearable piece of art. Now, someone had asked about or talked about the tassel, and I mean, I couldn't agree more. Uh, the, the beads itself is stunning because this is actually a gradation of all Mexican fire opal. And it, it, you know, the beauty of Mother Nature is that this is completely natural. And it goes from this dark burnt orange umber, if you will, and really gradiates down to this almost translucent white. And this is just fire opal. And it's actually quite interesting to see because I can show you what the beads look like in a center stone as well, which also has that color gradation. Um, and it's, it's so refreshing because no matter how many times you look at the stone, and no matter how many times you see it, when it's interpreted or cut in a slightly different way, it continues to inspire you. And you can really, oops, you can really see, if I can get the stone back up on here. There we go. You can really see the same gradation and pattern from the burnt orange that I had talked about in the very beginning, all the way down to the translucent milky white. And just being able to see that in not just bead form, but then also cut like this in a baguette with a step cut on top, continues to inspire us every day. And we, so we're actually working on a ring idea for this fire opal and you know perhaps maybe when we design around it we'll think about having it match our beautiful machan pendant here is actually something that gets really fun about this necklace which you know i think it's beautiful crystal and this is particularly spectacular you know because it's a double crystal, so it grew naturally like that. And oh, it's just, it's amazing to me to think that this just comes out from the ground as is. And so you can see kind of the contrast of it in its raw, beautiful state and it in its gemstone state or cut faceted state. You know, and I think it's been a while since I've seen this ring and seeing it again today and even seeing it again today and even yesterday too it just reminds me especially in a time like this the need for that we were, we're working on a design right now and i can actually show you another sneak peek of a design that we're working on in relation to this particular beautiful crystal we want to leave this in its raw state there's just something so beautiful and yes, inspiring about this stone that to me, it almost seems a shame to attempt to cut it, you know? And I think it's just, it's so gorgeous the way it is. And 
already having that tuamor ring with the combination of the naga and the tanzanite come together was just such a beautiful like it was almost meant to be and what we're going to do with this gorgeous crystal is essentially the same thing what we will we're thinking of doing is having our amazing powerful naga legend the symbol of, of protection and love as you know we we strongly believe in wrapped around this beautiful unbelievable raw be amazing crystal that is also a material that symbolizes protection you know and I, can you imagine this as like just an unbelievable necklace just as a talisman you know to, especially especially in a time like this. So watch this face, watch this guy. He'll be coming out hopefully soon. How are you guys all doing? It's so good to see more people joining. I'm so glad you're able to, to, to uh, take part in, in this little happy hour. Chinta, it varies from design how long each of these pieces take to complete and for something a little bit more complex like this where we will need to be really careful and sensitive about you know how we encase the stone and and the type of um how we carve the naga around the stone it's hard to say you know and i think as we go through this process it really will dictate how long a piece takes Pieces like the more complex pieces like that can take anywhere from six to nine months, sometimes even over a year. And that's after we've submitted or we've given them a sketch to work off of. But even within the creative process, the designing part of it can take easily a couple of months, a couple of weeks. You know, it really depends on how we're feeling what materials we find, what seems relevant within this day and age. My drink is over here, it's, it's off the, the camera, and I apologize, it's actually not a cocktail, it's coffee, because this whole work from home situation has caused me to kind of switch my schedule around, and now I'm bringing out the artist side in me where I'm more productive in the evening, but completely useless in the morning. So bear with me, I do have a drink, we will toast in a little bit, okay? Moving on, you know, I think we're continuing along this trend of the Naga and having him or her be that symbol of protection and love. And, but not, it's not always the case where we put the actual dragon on the design. So occasionally what we will do is simply just capture the essence of the dragon, whether it's via the motif of the, the dragon scales or just certain decor and, and elements that we bring out in, in almost a pattern or a texture on a or an encrusted pave texture within the jewelry piece 